I don't know about you, but I'm trying to fight back the tears here. It's real. God is so good. I'll be sharing this morning with you from the gospel according to Mark chapter 5. A very familiar passage of scripture, one you would have read many times. One you would have heard preached multiple times. The longer you've been you know, with, with Christ and following the Lord, you're no stranger to the, the, the word of God. And um, as I said, I thank God for this local church and um, what Christ is doing here and what you guys are doing in this, in this area and what you're doing you know, in the world. Um, when, I, when I first came here, I, 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 I observed in one of your hallways, the wall where you had all your missionaries. And lo and behold, I saw familiar faces when I was in Jamaica of missionaries who taught while, while I was in Bible college and you guys supported those missionaries. So you're, you're, you're certainly making an impact in the kingdom of God, not just here, but globally, all right? And um, the Lord bless you. So yeah, it's all right to put your hands together again. It is all right. Mark chapter five, beginning with verse one. Now I'll be reading the first 20 verses. Verse one says, they came to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gerasenes. When he got out of the boat, immediately a man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. And he had his dwelling among the tombs. And no one was able to bind him anymore, even with a chain. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains. And the chains had been torn apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces. And no one was strong enough to subdue him. Constantly, night and day, he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains and gashing himself with stones. Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed down before him. And shouting with a loud voice, he said, what business do we have with each other, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God, do not torment me. For he had been saying to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he was asking him, what is your name? And he said to him, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he began to implore him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there was a large herd of swine feeding nearby on the mountain. The demons implored him, saying, Send us into the swine so that we may enter them. Jesus gave them permission. And coming out, the unclean spirits entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea, and about 2,000 of them, and they were drowned in the sea. Their herdsmen ran away and reported in the city and in the country, and the people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus, they came to Jesus and observed the man who had been demon possessed sitting down clothed and in his right mind and the very man who had the lesion and they became frightened. Those who had seen it described to them how it had happened to the demon possessed man and all about the swine and they began to implore him to leave their reason. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon possessed was imploring him that he might accompany him. And he, and he did not let him. But he said to him, go home to your people and report to them what great things the Lord has done for you. And how he had mercy on you. And 20 and last. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis what great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. Father, in Jesus' name that you will speak clearly to your people. Lord, I pray that I'll decrease and you'll increase. Be thou glorified in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of the message is simply this. When Jesus shows up. There are many instances recorded in scripture when Jesus Christ would visit a particular area. 
For example, let me give you several of them. When Jesus showed up, Lazarus was brought back to life, having been dead for a while. When Jesus showed up, Peter's mother-in-law, fever departed. When Jesus showed up, the woman with the issue of blood was immediately cured after showing up in the crowd. Jairus' daughter was dead and on his way to perform a miracle, that's when the lady showed up. And we know the story. When Jesus showed up at Jairus' house, his, his, his daughter who was dead was brought back to life. Not only that, when Jesus shows up, he's able to speak to dead things. And dead things hear when he speaks. It's incredible. Now, if you see me speaking to dead things, you have to... I'm just saying, right? You probably think I'm crazy. But not so with Jesus. When Jesus showed up, the Samaritan woman experienced grace instead of condemnation. When Jesus showed up, the man with the withered hand had his hand restored on the Sabbath. When Jesus showed up, blind Bartimaeus received his sight. When Jesus shows up, the divine presence of God is always present. He is here with us today, church. And you say, how do I know this? Because he is the head of the church and we are members of his body. Glory to God. We're still talking about when Jesus shows up. Let's dissect this passage of scripture. After calming the storm at sea with his disciples in Mark 4, Jesus is approached immediately by a demonic possessed man in the opening of Mark chapter 5 in the country of the Gerasenes. His disciples never said a word to him, probably terrified due to fear or amazed by Jesus' approach in dealing with the demoniac. Brothers and sisters, I texted a friend of mine last night who I so happened to have a very good relationship with, a pastor friend of mine. He, he actually played the keyboard this morning. And I said to him, Pastor James, it dawned on me, having read the scriptures so many times, Jesus encountered demoniacs while he was here on earth. And I believe today with all my heart that there is an increase of demonic activities in our world today. And you don't have to go far. All you have to do is turn on the television screen. I am not here to talk about demons. I am here to talk about when Jesus shows up who has power over demons and demoniacs. His disciples never said a word to him. The word of God tells us that this man lived among the tombs. The man had been demon possessed for a very long time according to Luke 8 27. The man wore no clothes and lived a subhuman wild animal lifestyle. The man lived among the decaying and the dead. He lived among the decaying and the dead, contrary to Jewish law and human instinct, dwelling among the tombs. The man had supernatural strength. Chains were broken. The man was tormented and self-destructing, crying out and cutting himself with stones. The man had uncontrollable, he had a very uncontrollable behavior. Neither could anyone tame him. We can be sure, brothers and sisters, that he did not start out life or his life this way. At one time, this man lived among others in the village. But his own irrational, wild behavior convinced the villagers that he was demon possessed or at least insane. They bound him with chains. Of course, humans trying to define and fix problems in our own strength trying to diagnose 
things that we have absolutely no business diagnosing and we sometimes misdiagnose people like these people did is that true oh he was misdiagnosed his behavior was so wild as i said the villagers were convinced that he was no demon possessed or insane. They bound him with chains to keep him from hurting others. But he broke the chains time and again. Finally, they drove him out of town and he lived in the village cemetery. A madman among the tombs, hurting the only person he could himself. I believe with all my heart as the late Reverend David Wilkerson said, there is a devil behind the needles and he's probably somewhere hidden in the powder people are injecting themselves with. I, I believe it. The word of God says he was uncontrollable. His demonic strength caused him to break free from every attempt to restrain him. He was in lots of pain due to constantly cutting himself with stones. Cutting has been around for a very long time. And if it was demonic then to practice that kind of stuff, is it possible that it is still demonically influenced today? This man lived in isolation. He was out of touch with reality. We don't know what had occurred or what caused this in his life. However, we do know that he wasn't functioning according to God's plan and purposes for his life. He needed deliverance. And what he didn't know was the deliverer was on his way to deliver him. He didn't know that. The, the deliverer was on his way to deliver him. What struck me though in this entire story was the reaction of the people after the man was delivered. They were concerned about their livelihood. Is that happening today? Than the man being delivered, clothed and in his right mind. Instead of wanting Jesus to hang out in the area, the people implored him. What did they say? Please leave. And guess what Jesus did? He left. He's a gentleman. Jesus will not stay anywhere. He's not welcomed. And he will always be where he is invited. Finally, as I close, we see the delivered brother ready to follow Jesus because of what he had done in his life his deliverance was remarkable and could not be mistaken the lord jesus gave him a testimony and commissioned him to go tell everybody about the goodness of god this i'm not sure if you knew this but he was the first missionary to the gentiles Oh my God, you guys didn't know that, right? Yeah, that's what woe means, right? But he was. Read your Bible carefully. It's documented there in the text. I can only imagine, though, how dumbfounded and awestruck some people were when they saw him in his right mind and Jesus rolling off his lips. You know that old song that says, He touched me. Oh, he touched me and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole. I'm not sure if the, if the, if the writer of that song read when he said shackled by a heavy burden beneath a load of guilt and shame and then the hand of Jesus touched me and now I'm no longer the same if he had a family if this brother had a family they were no glad to see him after many years they were 
Think about that. Brother Angel shared. Our sister shared. I can tell you countless stories. After being touched by the Lord. My brothers and sisters had nothing to do with me. While I was addicted to crack cocaine. They treated me as if I were dead. They had absolutely no time of day for me. And of course, over the years, I mean, they watched me carefully and closely. But today they know after 19 years that when Jesus showed up in my life on June 4, 2004, he did a mighty work in my heart. I never saw this in my future. And you see, this is the same Jesus we preach and teach daily on both campuses. You see, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it is the power of God unto salvation. That's what we preach and teach. We're honored. We're humbled. We're sometimes beside ourselves that God would choose us, would call us out of darkness into his marvelous light to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're still, we're still talking about when Jesus shows up. The question is, are you waiting on him to show up in your life? That's a rhetorical question. And if I am a betting man, I'm positive 99% of everyone in this building, let me say, is probably waiting on Jesus to show up. The question is, when was the last time you invited him to show up, right? He will always show up where he's invited. And he will not stay where he's not invited. Thank you so much. You heard the stories. You've heard the stories. We're not the ones doing the work. It's the Spirit of God who is doing the work in his ministry. We're like one of the attendants who sat in the temple and when it was time for Jesus to read, to open the scroll, it was open. We're just attendants serving in the kingdom of God. Thank you again for your generosity. The Lord bless you.